Hello, my name is Kenneth B. Morse Jr. I'm the great, great, great grandson of Anna Murray and Frederick Douglass and the great, great grandson of educator Booker T. Washington. And I'm co-founder and president of Frederick Douglass Family Initiatives. We're an abolitionist and anti-racist organization with a mission to build strong children and to end systems of exploitation and oppression. And I know that much will be said about Frederick Douglass today, but I wanna spend a few moments just talking about my great, great, great grandmother, Anna Murray Douglas. She was the main pillar of the Douglas household. There would be no Frederick Douglas without her in his life. You know, it's been a long standing lament within our family that Anna's role in Frederick's life and the significance of her accomplishments have been overlooked and often diminished in most historical depictions. As outlined in my friend Celeste Marie Bernier's brilliant essay, 10,000 Agonies. Isaac Julian's Frederick and Anna Murray Douglas paint pictures of war and slavery. Anna's equal humanity has been questioned and disrespected within a white supremacist imaginary. She has been consigned to barely a footnote in the annals of history. This distortion of Anna's legacy whitewashes and sanitizes her feminism and activism. Anna was a pioneering social justice reformer and radical activist in her own right. There would be no Frederick Douglass without Anna in his life. They were married for 44 years. They had five children together and 21 grandchildren. And she was one of the first people to plant the seed of thought in his mind while he was enslaved as a teenage boy in Baltimore, Maryland, that he was not meant to be a slave for life. Anna was the first person in her family to be born free. And as they met and started to care about each other and think about a future together, she said, Frederick, I don't want our children's father to be a slave. Had she not sold her personal belongings to help finance his escape, had she not assisted with the sailor's disguise that he would wear, who knows if he would have ever had the courage or wherewithal to run away from slavery on September 3rd, 1838, at the age of 20. And had he not done that, we may be a very different country sitting here today without the contributions of the great abolitionist in our country. And so Anna is a very important piece to this whole picture. She was also a conductor on the Underground Railroad out of their house in Rochester, New York, where she helped to ferry hundreds of freedom seekers to their freedom in Canada. And so it's my honor to be able to talk about her today. I am as proud of her as I am of Frederick for her contributions, not only to our country and to the world, but to the family. Anna was Frederick's equal partner in the Black freedom struggle. In fact, the entire Douglas family worked tirelessly as civil rights activists, and they were a mighty, radical, freedom-fighting collective. Celeste writes that the Douglas family labored together in a shared struggle for the cause of liberty as they dedicated their lives to their united conviction. Everything else last, the cause must come first. So with that, I thank you for the opportunity to talk about Anna this afternoon. On this day, when we are honoring and learning about the life and legacy of Frederick Douglass, it is so wonderful that an award-winning professional portrait artist and owner of the prestigious Troika Gallery, Laura Era, is donating a portrait that she painted of Anna Marie Douglas. The portrait of Mrs. Douglas will hang next to a portrait of her husband in the Frederick Douglass room of the Easton Library. The portrait of Frederick Douglass was painted and gifted to the library as a part of last year's Frederick Douglass Day. Those who visit the Frederick Douglass room will see the portrait of Anna Marie Douglas hanging next to Frederick Douglass, which really emphasizes to our visitors how courageous she was and what an exemplary support she was to him and their family for over 44 years. The foundation of care that she provided allowed him to do all that he did. On behalf of the library, I would like to thank Laura Era for this wonderful portrait that serves as a reminder of everything she did from helping him to escape from slavery to the continued support she gave his abolitionist work for the rest of her life. Okay, here we go. First of all, I was truly honored to be able to, to paint both of these extremely notable Americans. And we thought it's so appropriate, being this is the Frederick Douglass room, 
that Frederick would come first, but then he meets his beautiful first wife to join him here in the Frederick Douglass room. I found out through reading about Anna that she was extremely important to him and his success. And uh, that, that's so fun to find that out about a woman, you know, that these wonderful men, that they had these strong women behind them. And so that was fun when I was painting this portrait. And if you notice, this is the reference material that I used. It's a very nice photo off of the uh, internet, um, but it is in black and white, as you can see. And so, but it's nice and clear. So I had good reference material for her. And so working from a black and white photo, even though it's clear, then I could have my way with what colors I wanted to choose for this uh, composition. And I really thought that with her lovely skin tones, that this teal would be really nice. And even the hair dressing, uh, a net that's on her bun. Now, what was interesting was I never could find out what this tie was and what it represented. And I asked several people that should have known, but you know, that's still a little bit of a mystery. But I think it's really beautiful, but I didn't know what color it was because again, I worked from a black and white photo. But in this case, I chose this nice sort of a blue gray, which uh, rep I thought represented the Union. You know, that's of course, this is during the Civil War. So now in the center of this cameo, um, I was told, that there was a portrait in there of a Haitian general. Uh, this has meaning, meaning for Frederick and her both. And so I did, even though it's teeny tiny, there's a little Haitian general in there. Uh, and I loved painting this. I, I think she's a beautiful woman and she certainly represents a strong foundation and backbone to uh, Frederick Douglass and how perfect that they're both in the room together.